Hello, welcome to another Andy's Workshop video. Um, today we're going to take a look at a starter board, an FPGA starter board called the Maximator, fe um, featuring an Altera Max 10 FPGA on board. I was sent this as a review sample by the company that makes this, and I, I promised them I would um, honestly, honestly look at it and see um, what I can do with it and provide my feedback. So we'll do the un unboxing here, we'll take a look at the features, and then uh, we'll move on to actually um, loading a design into it and seeing if I can make the thing do something. So let's have a quick rundown of the feature list on the back of the box before we open it. Um, now I'm a Xilinx guy, so um, some of these uh, features of the Max 10 are going to be alien to me, but it's going to be exciting, and you know, people say FPGAs are easy to um, transfer knowledge between different manufacturers, so let's hope that's the case. So firstly, we see that it's um, a Max 10 with some great big long serial number um, in the F256 BGA package. Um, BGAs are not much fun to work with, but um, they've done the hard work for you with this board and it's um, provided uh, ready to use. And there's something called the Empyrean uh, EP5388QI.8 uh, power sock voltage mode, whatever that means. Pro well, apparently it's a programmable step down converter with integrated inductor. I'll enjoy looking at that on the board. Um, it's compatible with the free quarters prime light um, development software, which is nice. Um, Arduino Uno Rev3 connectivity, I'm not sure about that. Let's have a look at the um, board when we get it out to see what that actually means. Um, FPGAs and Arduinos are hardly in the same bracket, FPGAs being you know, far more uh, powerful and really used for completely different purposes. For output, we seem to have uh, HDMI video out, v VGA analog out. VGA is very common to see on FPGA boards. It's an easy to, easy to program standard. Uh, four user LEDs, analog potentiometer in ADC channel. That doesn't really uh, make a lot of sense in English, but I think I know what they're trying to say. Uh, we have a 10 meg crystal clock generator there, which I, obviously the if the Max 10 is anything like the, um, the Xilinx, there's going to be a PLL on board, so to be able to multiply that up to a, a usable frequency. Um, a global reset, micro SD socket, micro USB, socket for USB UART converter, making, uh, I mean, you can easily get USB connectivity from your FPGA, and some LEDs. And they're offering a, a USB blaster JTAG download cable, and uh, there's an expander shield. Apparently this box has got the starter board, USB blaster compatible, the download cable, seven segment LED and a JTAG cable. So let's, uh, let's open the thing up and see what's inside. Okay, let's open up and see what we've got. Nicely packed inside, nicely presented, this looks good. So first thing we see inside an anti-static bag here, looks like the a USB cable. Let's open this up and have a look. Uh, an IDC 246810 pin cable and USB A to that looks like micro B. I guess that's uh, part of the download functionality. Again, I'm not familiar with um, Altera kit, so we'll find that out later. Place that to one side. And here's the board itself by looks of things. What's that? Oh, it's like a screw, a loose inside. Hmm. Opening it up. Oh yeah, this is the Arduino format, definitely. So there we have it. Okay, I'm just going to go close up of that so you can see the board. Pride of place in the middle there is the Max 10 in the BGA uh, format. Now this is uh, this is one heck of a well, it's, it's a lot of there's a lot of IOs on this. It's a BGA. It's common in um, the FPGA land. It's to provide. Um, either QFN or BGA packages because the, the FPGAs have huge numbers of outputs and the, um, you just can't fit them around any other package sensibly. So this particular one, I'll link in um, the, an image from DigiKey so you can see uh, what it actually costs you to buy one of these things. I mean in the UK uh, we're talking £20 um, including tax just for the chip. So this board being priced at €49 Euros for international sales outside international being outside Poland because this is for a Polish company is I think very good value because the, the Max 10 alone is, is £20 worth of kit. Um, so 178 IOs, now, right, um, the, I, I don't, I, this is where I have a problem with the Arduino format. And um, so many IOs um, just you know, aren't being used because of the limits of the, of the Arduino format. So I'd prefer to see them abandon that. Um, I, I know people find it familiar and everything and the shields can plug on top of this thing. 
but it's just even if they just put extensions on the side with more headers you could you could get more of this 178 IOs and um, broken out for people to use um, but I, I do appreciate this is a starter board and, and that's what you're going to get and um, so what have we got on the bottom we have uh, it's just a logo from the company that produced it it's a Polish company as I said so you, you see the uh, website address there um, back to the top again there's the HDMI so obviously the HDMI out um, what else have we got that's micro SD on the edge there can't see what those are. We'll have a look at the smaller chips under my macro lens. Um, I can't see what those are at the moment. There's a very obvious big tantalum um, capacitor sitting over the side there. Uh, there's a pot. Uh, that looks like a programming socket. There's the VGA out. And the Arduino compatible pins. And a whole load of what look like transistors lined up there. We'll have a look at those. I suspect those are providing level conversion. Um, but I'll only find out when I can um, you know, get this thing under the microscope and we'll have a look at what's on the, on the board. Let's see what else is remaining in the box here, hiding underneath this um, second half. What's this? This is the USB blaster. Let's get inside that thing. I've got to seal it up properly. Here's my knife. I'm trying to avoid cutting my finger open. Let's get in there. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Kamai USB blaster. I can only assume that's a programmer. Never used the USB blaster before. Well, I've heard of it, never actually used one. Um, we will use this later in the video and we'll see if we can make it work with this device. All using the uh, same consistent black solder mask. Black looks nice. I mean, the black solder masks with the white um, the, the screen print on it do look good. As long as you don't want to actually see your traces because they, they do hide traces quite well. But that, that, that does look nice. The whole thing's consistent. So we've got one more item in here. Let's see what this is. Oh, it looks like the expander board. Excellent. So the expander board looks, uh, it's going to be in the Arduino shield format. I can see the, the, the telltale gap there that, and, and there between the pins that everyone um, complains about on the Arduino board. And so what have we got? We've got those uh, PLCC mount RGB LEDs. Um, that'll be fun. We'll see if we can do something with those. Um, can't see the writing on that yet. We'll return to that and we'll uh, investigate it later. Um, some actual test points, test pin points here you can attach uh, probes to for ground. That's actually quite nice. And we've got obviously the seven segment uh, LEDs here and a couple of buttons and what looks like a reset switch. I expect this is because it's probably uh, you know, when you attach a shield it's covering up the reset on board. Um, yeah, these are good. I like these test points. Now, if you're probing with an oscilloscope, you need um, your oscilloscope probe needs a, a, a good ground contact. Especially when you're probing high speed, you've got to get a very short um, ground connection from your probe to uh, to the board. And having these little these little curly pins here are excellent. You can just you can just um, tack onto those for your ground reference while you while you're probing left of the board rest of the board. Very well thought out. I like that a lot. And we've got mounting screw holes here, which I expect uh, will mate up exactly with the mounting screw holes on the board itself. Um, let's take a look back at the board again. Yes, there they are in the same positions. Mounting screw holes are good. Um, it means that you can, you don't, if you produce a design with this thing of your own and you want to uh, mount it inside a box, the screw holes make it easy. And you're not going to have to lift this thing off the board. Um, well, you know, not lift, off, lift the FPJ off the board. I mean, lift your design off the board into your own uh, PCB and then have to uh, work with this rather um, unpleasant BGA. Um, I think they've gone through a lot of work here to make this usable for, for beginners and it should be uh, a good board to work with. Okay, so I'll just clarify, uh, you know earlier on I thought I saw um, a loose screw in the box here. It isn't a loose screw in the box, it's another nice touch by the company here. It's actually, I looked closely at it, it's actually a um, potentiometer adjustment thumb screw. So the pop, there's a pop there. And um, to be able to adjust it, you'd have to find either a very small screwdriver or adjustment thing. And this, this thing fits perfectly in there and allows you to adjust the pot. Nice thought there, just to supply everything that you actually need. Very good. Right, time to have a look at it under the macro lens. And um, it's starting with the star of the show, the Altera Max 10 BGA package right there. Um, not much to say about that really, except you can see the, um, the, the you know, decoupling capacitors arranged around the outside, totally essential for an FPGA. Um, they're, they're very finicky about their power supplies and it's nice to see those in, in there in place. So let's move up to the 
power supplies themselves. Now FPGAs require multiple power supplies, they're, they're, they always have, they're, they're a bit of a pain actually to design when you do your own because you find that you have to supply you know, multiple rails. Um, this board is based around the 5 volt input from the um, USB socket so um, the FPGA itself requires 3.3, 2.5 and 1.2 and those three little QFNs that you see in there are the um, the, the uh, actual, I'll point them out here, they are the actual uh, Altera power supplies, they're, they're made by Altera for this FPGA um, and I think that's going to be the one big giant tantalum input capacitor that covers all of them. Um, so usually the three point th with the FPGAs, the 3.3 will be powering the output buffers um, for these, so the, the, the IOs will be uh, running at 3.3. Um, the the one point two, the lowest of them all, will be for powering the um, FPGA's internal circuitry, and there's usually quite a bit of load on that. And I'm actually going, I'm going by my knowledge of Xilinx chips here, so I'm hoping the Max Ten from Altera is roughly the same in terms of you know power design. And the other one, the two point five volt rail, is usually for the um, programming um, circuits. So. Um, the, you, you know, the end result is that you have to supply these three rails, and Altera have, have you know created um, power supply packages in tiny little QFNs here um, that will do the job and will obviously ideally suited to their own FPGA. So let's have a look at a look around the board here again and I'm going to correct myself earlier on I said that these little things here along the outside, let's see if I'm bringing them into proper focus, um, were an, looked like an array of transistors, I was wrong, they're actually an array of protection diodes because those are the analog inputs there and the protection diodes are used to ensure that the um, analog inputs don't exceed 2.5 volts. Basically, they clamp the input to 2.5. So if you exceed it, um, then the FPGA won't be won't be damaged. Down here, we've got some general purpose LEDs. Um, you can obviously very uh, useful when you when you're um, doing development just to you know see whether your outputs your design is doing what it's supposed to do. Because debugging an FPGA design is monumentally difficult in circuit. So yeah, it's nice to have some outputs there, even if it's just for debug purposes. Up here we've got high speed level converters, they cover all of the, um, the, the connection, the sockets here, the header sockets, so that you can uh, use 5 volt inputs and not blow the thing to pieces. Quick look at the uh, USB blaster programming device here, it's got micro USB in there, and which takes it straight into um, an FTDI, looks like an FT232 USB to serial converter, which then feeds another official Altera part, it's an E64C5N CPLD which will obviously be doing you know, the, basically the signal conversion from um, serial to whatever the FPGA needs for its programming standard. Um, so yeah, they're using uh, nice, nice parts on here. There's no, no fakes or anything like that. Good official Altera FTDI, everything. It's all looking nice. So that concludes my little unboxing and first look around the board video. And um, I have to say I'm quite impressed. You get a lot for your money. Um, FPGA boards are notoriously expensive. Um, they, you know, they really do um, charge a lot for them. And this is this offers um, the beginner who wants to get into FPGA programming um, a, a, you know, a low cost entry point using perhaps a format that they're perhaps familiar with. Um, it offers IOs that, that, that use a voltage that they will be compatible with peripherals that they may have used before. And overall, it looks like a good way into the um, the FPGA ecosystem. Now. Um, my next step is going to be to try and produce some designs for this thing to see if the uh, production of designs um, lives up to the ease of use that the hardware offers. So um, I'll do I'll produce um, a write up on my website of this and um, uh, you know, see how I get how I get on with the thing. It will be the first time I've used Altera uh, Quartus software, and we'll see how it com um, compares to the uh, Xilinx ISE package that I'm more familiar with. So um, let's see how we do. Thank you for watching.